This video is about cabinet boxes and what I actually use for material for the box itself. There is a quite an array of choices you can use for your cabinet, but I'll tell you there's only a couple that I really end up using in the end. Almost all of my jobs are done with a pre-finished maple ply material. That's the most requested material for cabinet boxes themselves, okay? And I'm gonna show you this particular one is what's called classic core. And that means just below the decorative surface, which is very thin, just below that is a 1 8 approximate thickness of MDF and then there's layers of other layers of plywood. Now, uh, you may ask why. Well, the biggest reason to use MDF, and this is an actual piece of MDF, right here. It's basically sawdust and it's very hard. It's compressed into a board. I mean, that's what MDF is, but it's more than that in that it's a really good paint grade surface and it's very flat and smooth. By putting it underneath the decorative layer, you get a very flat piece of wood, a very flat panel. You want that because you want your panel to stay straight as possible. And in my experience, this, this one has bowed the least over like a full length, a long one. Now, typically, this is also pre-finished maple plywood, okay? But this is veneer core. And Columbia Forest Products uses a, a term called MPX for the layer that's just below this surface and this surface. Not all their plywood is that. I believe this is one of those because this top and bottom layer, if you look close, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's kind of greenish. And that is actually poplar. They use poplar uh, below the surface and they claim that that reduces the amount of uh, telegraphing when you see veneers underneath the actual decorative veneer, like you see some sort of extra lines and plywood sometimes does that. And this is supposed to be less susceptible to that. But the reason I go with uh, classic core is because this particular core or veneer core tends to bow a little bit over long uh, panels. And if you have a really tall cabinet, it could, it could bow. So the least amount of, bow, of bowage comes from using the uh, classic core, all right? You don't have to use a veneer core plywood to build a box. This is just that it's the most common. Uh, this is what's called melamine, and it's basically plastic uh, type of resin impregnated paper that they heat and pressure, and it gives a very durable surface. You can see here, this is plastic, and you can see here, that's the, the uh, particle board core. That is typically what this is uh, put on, it, particle board. It stays flat. And particle board is not really horrible. People have an aversion to it um, because they've had cabinets fall apart from Ikea and such. But I've been building cabinets with this and the white melamine for years and years, never had a problem. I don't remember one, getting a call back on one, honestly, to fix it because it broke. So there's that. And I've also put like, a, I, done a, I did a whole kitchen or kitchens with the melamine and then the sink cabinet I did with plywood because that was a concern. Um, but this stuff is cheaper. To give you an idea, uh, we have, this is over $100 a sheet. I think it's close to 120 for the, with tax and everything, for the MDF underneath the surface, that's classic core. For the veneer core, it's a little less, maybe it approaches 90, 90 to hundred dollars, right? And then we get to the maple, that's nowadays. The maple melamine, this is just the color, you can get this in many, many colors, but this one I think is about, I'm not even sure, it's about 45, 50 bucks a sheet. So it's definitely half the cost, when you're building the boxes out of this stuff. And this is even less than the, the hard rock maple melamine. Not much, it's probably around 40, $45, I don't know. But it's been a little bit since I've actually used it. I actually use this for my cabinets in my shop. Uh, whenever, this right here was built with, this is in these drawers that are behind me. 
um, for the basic box. I use this because it's the cheapest. Why not? And yes, you need different screws for this to assemble. You would need different screws for the particle board than you would with plywood. And that's maybe another video. Okay, let's go to MDF. I'm not sure if I showed you, but this is, a, this is another piece of MDF. It's three quarter thick. And this might actually be what's called MEDX, which is an exterior grade MDF because it's dark. I'm not positive, but I have a sheet of this in my truck to resist the uh, rain. And <laughs> it's on the bed of my truck. And anyways, uh, it's very waterproof, amazingly, that you can actually see the core there, but it's, it's actually very waterproof, okay? That, not regular, MDF is not waterproof. That's just the exterior grade. And then let's take a look at this. This is maple, maple veneer. And when they say decorative layer, this is the layer on the top surface. If you get a close look at that, See the MDF? It's pretty much the entire board is MDF. This is under, I think it's not even a 32nd of an inch. MDF is good for painting because like I said, it's flat. You wouldn't use this really to build cabinets out of, generally. You could build a bookcase using this material, right? It's flatter, it's straighter. This right here uh, with the MDF core is flat, like I said, and people use this all the time, not all the time, but a lot, for making doors or for the end panel of a cabinet because it's nice and flat, all right? You can use it for shelving is because it's nice and flat, uh, but doors, the reason you would want this for like a flat slab door is because you can edge band it with a matching veneer, you would put the same veneer, very thin uh, veneer on the entire exterior of it. And when you put that on the exterior and you file it, that's what you get, just a flat slab door or drawer front, just like that. Here's an example of one. This is ripped white oak. In the center of it, I know just by feeling the weight of it that that's MDF. And if I used it on a job, I'll show a picture, uh, with all of this, it's flat slab doors. And it was veneered in the same exact material as the face. Any type of real wood is gonna vary from panel to panel. And uh, that's a whole nother discussion. You can get what's called sequence match so that they're very, uh, they look the same panel to panel or similar, but that wasn't the purpose of this video. What I'm trying to say is that we have our different cores and what's their purpose? This is not generally for cabinet uh, boxes, but like I said, you could do a bookcase, you can do open shelving with it. As far as screwing into it, it's not as good as screwing into plywood. And I would use what's called a conformat screw to screw into MDF to get more of a strong joint, but it's a very, MDF is like the stablest, flattest material you can get. And that's the reason you would use it. And when you uh, buy a full sheet to make doors, well, now you can save quite a bit of money. If you were gonna make your own shaker doors or raised panel doors, you can imagine all the work that goes into that. Well, if you want to, you go modern and you go with a um, panels that are flat and you just veneer them, that's a hell of a lot less work than making doors. I have an edge bander for doing the banding, but even if you did it by hand, it's still gonna take less time than making a shaker, a recessed, or a raised panel door. Anyways, that's, that's that. And then we have here what's called an import plywood. I use this for rough top, for the top of the base cabinets before they put on, um, before they put the tile down because it's just a cheaper plywood. You don't need anything fancy for underneath there. Um, but this stuff feels honestly like balsa wood. Screwing into this is terrible. I would not build boxes out of this. Even though it looks good on the surface, it's banded plywood. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's so lightweight that when you drill into that, there isn't much holding power at all. And there's no, the other reason I don't like this stuff you barely touch it and you get a splinter. I mean, it's ridiculous. 
So you gotta be careful with this stuff as far as, right now I'm surprised I didn't get a splinter just talking to you with this, all right? Um, let's see here. Let's go back to pre-finished, all right? Now, pre-finished. Why on earth do you want pre-finished? I would use nothing but pre-finished materials for my cabinet boxes. And that is because it's pre-finished. You don't have to finish it. You're done. You build your box. Okay, I, let me put this another way. You're not done, but you don't have to finish the interiors of the cabinets. And so basically what you do when you have pre-finished plywood is you edge band the edge the same species as the doors are gonna be in your cabinet build. So if your doors are maple, you would edge band this with maple. If the doors are alder, you would edge band this with alder. If the um, doors are paint grade, you could use almost anything that you have, scraps, <laughs> other than maybe oak. I would use a flat veneer like maple or birch or alder would work as paint grade but face frame aren't gonna be much different. The way that works is if I was gonna make this as a face frame cabinet, I would build the box without any edge tape. When the box is all assembled, then I build whatever frame, whatever the doors are, whatever the, uh... so if the doors are maple, my frames are gonna be maple. I order all my doors. Just because I'm a cabinet shop, I don't have time to make the doors. And when I order the doors, I'll order my maple doors. I'll make all my own face frames. And then they get attached to the box itself, right? Show it this way. So the frame gets attached to the front. And that's it. So the frame covers th this area then gets masked off later so that you can finish the frame and your doors. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to uh, solid wood. I've had people ask me, really? You're not making my cabinets out of solid wood? No. <laughs> I don't say that to them, but uh, that's what I'm thinking in my head. The thing is with solid wood, it's gonna be super expensive. I have made cabinets out of solid wood, but you wouldn't make a habit out of it. That's something that's maybe uh, an exterior trunk that's next to a pool. I made this really cool uh, box for towels so they could have warm towels next to the pool. This is one of the coolest things I've ever made actually. I'll show a picture of it. And uh, that was made out of Ipe, which is an exterior grade solid wood. And I did it in slats so it's not like one big chunk of wood. So you can understand that. Um, but wood expands and contracts and if you built a cabinet box out of totally solid wood, um, you would have an issue with expansion contraction, the joints would crack and all that. Have you ever seen an old pine kitchen falling apart? You've been to a house and there was a pine box, the cabinet sides were made out of pine. Well, they're usually all separated and they're coming apart. So I would never build a box, a standard cabinet box out of solid wood. So that's why they have plywood. That's why they have particle board. That's why they have MDF. I wouldn't really use MDF much for cabinets. Hopefully that explanation of the different materials that you can use for your cabinets uh, has helped you. Um, personally, I would build shop cabinets out of probably melamine, white melamine is the cheapest. And if you can get uh, a good uh, birch plywood, a Russian birch plywood, those are really good for building like, uh, if you want something to be hyper strong, like a cart or something like that. I made uh, one I can maybe show you in a picture. And um, yeah, so if this was workable for you, this information was useful for you, I would appreciate hitting the uh, like button Subscribe if you haven't already and I will come out with more information as I'm able to. I have a regular day job building and installing cabinets. I try to film as I can, but I'm not gonna get the job done if I'm sitting there filming stuff. So um, that's about it. I uh, appreciate it and uh, have a great year. Appreciate it and have an awesome day. All right.